Hello everyone, uh, Sanket here. Welcome to another tutorial and another session on my channel. Uh, today we are going to learn about immunoinformatics. So um, in this chapter, we'll be first looking at basic what is the introduction to immunoinformatics, then what are the various uh, data sources which are available, then some of uh, the tools and the algorithms, okay, to predict the B cells, to predict the T cells um, and allergy informatics. And last is uh, to study the applications of immunoinformatics. So um, guys, our human immune system uh, is very complex, okay, and it operates at uh, multiple levels, that is at your molecules, cells, organs, and organisms. Each individual has a very unique immune system okay, and will respond differently uh, based on the immunological changes. Uh, it also has a combination of various uh, biological structures and uh, processes within the organism okay, uh, to protect it against any sort of disease which is available. Okay. Uh, if you look at the first um, the earliest reference to uh, immunology, it goes way back to 430 BC. Okay, so Thucydides was the first one who uh, studied on basic organisms which were there or uh, something what we, uh, it was not termed as immunology that time, it was, he started with it. It was afterwards many years later, um, the actual work started in 1798. Edward uh, Jenner found um, that some of the milkmaids were immune to smallpox, okay, uh, which were earlier um, uh, contacted to basically the uh, cowpox one, okay. Uh, and all of you know afterwards what happened. He found out um, a, a vaccine basically for smallpox after that. The next advancement which actually took place was um, in the uh, induction or the development of cholera vaccine by Louis Pasteur. Finally, in 1890, there were a lot of experiments which were led uh, to the understanding of um, immunity by Behring and uh, Kitsato. Okay, so all of these experiments which were done on a prior scale were basically to detect the antibodies which are present in the serum. Uh, and uh, these antibodies then provided a protection against the various uh, pathogens which were there. So this was how the initial steps for immunology uh, had begun. So according to uh, the traditional dogma of immunology, uh, vertebrates have both. They have uh, your innate and your um, adaptive uh, immunology. Innate immunology acts uh, more rapidly okay, and is older and is more evolutionary conserved uh, if you are comparing it with your uh, adaptive immune system. Uh, your uh, innate immune system provides a backbone on which basically your adaptive immune system uh, is uh, was able to evolve. So your immune, Im Im uh, immune system is less specific and it uh, works as your first line of defense. So that is that is the first where uh, any pathogen actually attacks. So it comprises basically of four uh, defense barriers. The number one uh, being your um, anatomic. Okay. Uh, number two being your phagocytic. Uh, uh, sorry, number two being your physiologic. I'm sorry. Number three being your phagocytic and number four being your inflammatory. So first one is anatomic, second uh, is uh, physiologic, third is phagocytic and fourth is your uh, inflammatory defense. On the other hand, your adaptive immune system <clears throat> in vertebrates is basically generated within uh, five to six days after your first entry of the pathogen. Okay, uh, it is coordinated by a network of highly specialized cells, all right, that uh, communicate uh, through the surface interactions. Okay, and uh, these uh, communications are nothing but what you call as probably you must be knowing what it is called, they are called as your cytokines and your chemokines. Okay, um, 
Later exposure uh, to the same pathogen induces um, a specific response which it retains itself as a memory and these memory cells okay is um, uh, from these memory antibodies what we can see or from these memory cells is something what we uh, develop what we call as your vaccines okay um, your adaptive immunity is basically made up of uh, two types you have your B cells and you have your T cells okay uh, the uh, B cells are uh, linear and they are discontinuous basically uh, whereas if you look at uh, your T cells they can be uh, um, they are short and linear peptides okay um, so T cells have two glycoproteins on the surface uh, uh, which uh, which can be CD8 okay and they can be designed as CD8 and uh, CD4 uh, your CD4 T cells they act as uh, the helper cells uh, which recognize the peptides which is displayed on your uh, MHC okay uh, uh, class 2 molecules on the other hand uh, the CD8 uh, what is there the CD8 functions as a TC or you must be knowing them as cytotoxic T cells and uh, these recognize uh, the peptides which is displayed on your MHC class 1 molecules so one of them okay which is cd4 uh, it recognizes uh, uh, mhc class 2 which is this one and your cd8 okay uh, it recognizes the peptides on your mhc class 1 molecules so then the question which was arrived was why exactly immunoinformatics see uh, there was a huge amount of data which was uh, being generated uh, which was related to the immune system through a lot of immunological uh, research okay uh, which was being carried out and there was a large development of this uh, high throughput experimental techniques okay and this high throughput experiment techniques uh, generated a vast amount of your uh, functional clinical and um, epidemiological data and therefore there was a need to develop a uh, computational approach uh, which could basically uh, store and uh, it could analyze uh, the data which is needed and this gave uh, the birth to uh, immunoinformatics so immunoinformatics um, got to be known by various different names after uh, the computational informatics was actually brought to people uh, it was introduced in uh, various names uh, some of them called as immunogenomics, uh, which is a part of your uh, computational immunology, immunoproteomics, uh, epidome prediction, in silico vaccines, immunoinformatics, uh, reverse vaccinology, okay, uh, or immunomics. So there were a lot number of games which were, uh, names which were actually given to um, this computational immunology which was there. Now, uh, when we are talking about computational immunology, what is important for us is to know uh, which are the data sources from where uh, this um, uh, we get the immunological data. So, uh, a number of lab experiments, uh, your scientific literature, uh, your molecular databases, uh, tools, servers and clinical records, all of these comprise your uh, data source. Now, the first data source which was available <clears throat> was from your uh, lab data now when i'm talking about uh, the data the experimental data which is coming from labs uh, i'm talking about the experimental uh, data coming from all of your high throughput techniques such as your affinity chromatography flow cytometry um, ria or uh, radio amino assays uh, elizas um, then coombs uh, test or uh, competitive in inhibition assays so all of these experimental findings okay they were uh, incorporated into your uh, different data sources which were there uh, next was your immunomic uh, uh, immunomic microarrays so immunomic uh, microarrays uh, technology uh, de basically deals with uh, uh, the uh, it, it tells us about uh, your uh, expression of your um, uh, antibodies or your antigens which is present 
next is your uh, immunomic databases all right uh, we will discuss more about what exactly is this immunomic in some other video but immunomic databases also uh, talks about um, your um, uh, immunology base that is your antigens antibodies epitopes okay all of the information is present in this databases oh sorry next is your um, b cell uh, databases okay so uh, there are various tools in with which you can predict those b cells so all of the information about the b cells is stored in that then you have your t cell databases and last is your allergy allergy prediction databases so all of these sources okay um help us um in your uh, understanding of your immunology okay so your uh, data source from your labs uh, from your microarray technology from your various databases b cells t cells and allergy prediction databases uh, help us to um, the data which is obtained from all of this help us to actually predict okay what are your uh, antigens or your antibodies so these are the names of some of the uh, databases which is present for immunomic databases you have innate db you have cellbill for b cell databases you have cad uh, bci pep um, uh, epioptome uh, iadb imgt your t cell databases okay uh, we have uh, specpt iadb imgt and for allergen databases we have uh, databases of uh, iuis allergen pro database um, allergome 4.0 uh, allergome 4.0 and sdap so these are the various uh, databases what is available okay for all of this for your immunomic b cell t cell and your allergen databases <laughs>